Hello YouTube. How are you today? So I'm doing a little work on my tactical Mossberg slash coast to coast master mag. Uh, I had a problem last time at the range where every time I would fire it the safety would come on. Found out what that was. Apparently it was missing a spring when I got it and the safety didn't work then and I didn't pay much attention to it because I knew as soon as I got it home I was stripping it. <coughs> so I got that fixed. It was a spring and a ball that ride on a little plate but I got my ATI stock and forend and a shell holder that will be putting on it as well but I thought I'd get some of this, uh, I'm doing a little touch up on the bluing. I'm not going to be completely bluing it, but we'll be uh, touching it up. You can kind of see the wear. The, the, uh, this here, I just kind of buffed that down because it was really, uh, wasn't pitted, but it had a lot of machining marks. And with the ATI foregrip on it, it shows. So <laughs> I kind of wanted it covered. So I'm just going to touch up on the uh, action bars and around here. I'm just going to use Oxfo Blue to do that. And a little, uh, if I can find it, acetone as a degreaser. Um, and some cotton balls because it really doesn't have to get too fancy. Um, like I said, I'm just touching it up because it's stuff that's seen. The acetone just uh, needs a good wipe down. So we'll wipe everything off. This is a kind of degrease everything. And I don't, you know, I don't have expectations of it. Uh, these are pretty, the action bars are a pretty high wear part. And I don't have any uh, great expectations of it. Uh, the bluing staying on forever anyway. So, you know, it's a part that gets every time you chamber around, you move those action bars. And my magazine tube as well has some spots in it right along here. And I'll just be touching those up too. But I'm going to concentrate on this. You'll see the process. Um, and then I'll go ahead and do the rest of it. And I will stop short of putting the ATI stock on it so that you can see how that's installed. Um, there's a few other parts I might hit up with a little bluing, just, I don't know, make them pretty, I guess. Everything works okay now that I put the uh, spring and that ball in the safety. So, get rid of some of my tools here because I have way too much crap on my bench. I need those too. All right, so we wiped everything down with the acetone, which is step number one. I'm getting kind of low on my Oxfo blue, but this is what I like to use for touch-ups. Um, for a long time, I used it for all of my bluing needs, um, and it does a pretty nice job. But, oops, lost my cotton ball. We'll wring it out a little bit because we don't need all that. So we just kind of are going to wipe it on to these spots. And it should, you know, might take a couple of coats, but it should, you know, at least make them so they're not shiny silver. And that's really all I'm concerned with. It is, you know, supposed to be kind of a tactical shotgun, so we'll uh, make it a little prettier. I am kind of rubbing this in a little bit. I see the some of the oils and stuff you're just not going to get off with anything. So sometimes you just kind of need to deal with it. Which is all I'm doing. And it seems if I rub a little bit it's uh, getting in there and doing its thing anyway. 
and like I said, I'm, I'm not looking, I just want to, you know, kind of make it a little unshiny for the time being. I'm still debating on whether I'll, uh, I'm looking at uh, doing some alumahide on it, as opposed to some of the other products. Uh, I don't know why alumahide is a uh, air dry. I know Duracoat does too, but it seems that uh, alumahide goes on a little thinner. And I don't want to mess with any of the action of it. I want everything to continue to work properly. Uh, and not that there's any really tight tolerances on this shotgun, but, you know, if I can keep everything working good. I don't know if you could remember what it looked like, but this isn't shiny anymore. It's still a little damp from the bluing, um, but it's not shiny anymore. It's actually taken up blue quite nicely. So, I'll just... Uh, go over everything a few times. Um, you'll see in a lot of the videos they say to warm it, which I probably should do because it is a little on the nippy side down in my basement here. But I don't really, you know, like I said, this isn't uh, supposed to be the greatest end all be all. I know it's just going to get take come off anyway. So, we do that. And I just like to take a clean rag and wipe it off after the first coat. Just kind of wipe everything down, dry it off. And you can see, I don't know, my camera sucks, but you can kind of see that uh, there's a little shine to it again, but there's no bare metal anymore. It's all blued. So that's kind of, you know, the the ring around there is kind of shows you what it'll look like after the first coat on bare steel. There's other, um, I've got another gun that I'm working on that I'm going to use the uh, Birchwood Casey Super Blue on. And the Super Blue is kind of designed to go on to a highly polished surface, which uh, my Baluster Molina is at this point just a high polish. I've run it through my polishing wheel. Um, I'm going to bake it, try to get some of the extra um, grease and stuff out of it because the grease, grease and oil will soak right into steel. Um, you wouldn't think so because steel is, doesn't appear to be porous, but it is somewhat porous. So, that is why we're, I'm going to bake it, um, boil it in some water, just water with uh, regular dish soap, Dawn dish soap in it, because um, Dawn has a, has a pretty good grease cutter agent in it, and it's worked for me before in the past. One of these days I'll, I'll uh, show some, some better shots of some of the other guns that I've cold blued. Uh, that have actually come out really nice. I have an old Ivor Johnson Champion shotgun that I know I shouldn't have blued because of the patina, but really it doesn't hold a lot of value. It holds more personal value to me because it was like grandfather's. And that's pretty much the only reason I, I blued it is to preserve it more for me. Uh, but I refinished the stock on it and everything. And on my Stevens 987, we're going to hopefully get some video on redoing the stock on that. Now this, like I said, I'm not shooting for perfect here. And don't really care. The Oxbow Blue you're supposed to be able to use... Uh, right over some grease and fingerprints and don't believe it it doesn't doesn't do as well that way um, sometimes like smaller parts I will soak them I'll just pour some of the bluing into a Tupperware container 
and a lot of just drop the parts in there, you know, like triggers and that kind of thing, so that I'm not, you know, having to handle them. I usually do wear rubber gloves too, but I didn't feel like uh, going to all that right now. So, I don't know, you can kind of see, it probably won't focus real well, but it's at least black. And it's much smoother and much more attractive than it was. So once you got the bluing on, you now that's just a couple of coats. It's not a ton of bluing, it's not a, a ton of work like I would normally do in a cold bluing process. But, like I said, I just wanted to touch it up a little bit. So now, we're going to have to oil it. And there's a lot of, you know, a lot of people say a lot of different things. I like to use WD-40. Um, I do have this little bottle of Outer's gun oil. Let's see, rough preventative and lubricant. And I'm just going to use that today. It's a little thick. I won't, you know, I don't like it to to use it on any of my guns per se, but for this task at hand, it'll keep it from rusting, and that's the main thing we want to accomplish here. Because bluing is actually a rusting process. Uh, my very first blue job that I did, I didn't, uh, uh, you know, I was getting anxious. I wanted to see it done. It was an old 22. And while in the end it came out beautifully, I had to redo everything because um, it rusted. And normally I'll leave these sit just with the oil on them for a day or so anyway. But since this is some other stuff and I'm not probably not going to take it to the range for a couple of days. And, I don't know, it's not perfect. It doesn't need to be. Don't want it to be. But it is what it is. I'm going to touch up a couple spots on the barrel too, just because I'm not duracoating it yet. I'm not exactly sure, or whatever I'm going to decide to use on it. There again, I haven't really decided. Um, until I get around to that, I'm just going to leave it blue. On our magazine tube. Let's see how long we're getting to be here. Yeah, we're getting kind of long already. So, uh, I'm going to break here. I'm going to do this in two parts. And this will just be touch up bluing on the bad spots here that you can see. Um, and I'll do a few touch ups on the barrel and such. So, be looking for the second part. Thanks for watching. Be safe. God bless.